New Testament tells what happened in the soul of man. These experiences were heard and seen by none, save by him in whom they occurred. Through these experiences, that man gained the certainty that he is God. It happens in man. That man is then called the Word of God. As we are told in the name by which he is called is the Word of God. We are told that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So he is called the Word of God to show what intimate relation exists between the written oracle in which God declared his will to man and that personal word which abides forever in us. For he sent his word, as we are told, and the word that goes forth from my mouth shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And the sender and the saint are one. For if in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, well then, God and His Word are one. So He sends His Word, and His Word abides in us. In time, that Word will erupt like a flower, like a tree, at the season of the year. And then it will interpret those written oracles which seem so altogether concealed and blind to us. Man can quite break the seal and interpret that written oracle. But when the word unfolds in us, then the whole thing seems so simple. And we wonder why we hadn't seen it before. Now, the Bible is simply the biography of God. So you read it. And then you don't understand it before the word erupts, but you read it, and you have a very good memory, you know exactly what you read. And one day, suddenly, unexpectedly, the time has come, and the word which went forth from the mouth of God the Father and abides in you as your own wonderful human imagination begins to unfold. And it unfolds, and the biography you thought belonged to another is all about you. Because everything said in that story concerning a seeming other, you are now beginning to experience. And you experience it in detail. You must gain the certainty that you are God. For if this is the biography of God, and it becomes your biography because you can't deny the experiences. You could no more deny the experiences that you've had, though they are mystical, than you could deny the experience of being here now. I know I am here. I know you are here. I know where I am at the moment. So this is a simple, simple occurrence. I could no more deny this as something that I've actually experienced at this moment in time than I can now deny these experiences that are part of the story of God. Now we are told this is what you're going to hear on Christmas morning, what you will hear from now on, on Sunday morning, that I bring you good news, not any sad thing, I bring you good news. And all these who are bringing the good news are all dressed up like undertakers. Here, the story is the story of good news. I bring you good news. What is the good news? That this day is born in the city of David a Savior. This day is born in the city of David a Savior. That's the good news. Then the sign that has happened is this. 
you'll find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Well, the Bible quoted in Scripture is the Old Testament. There is no portion of the New when it uses the word Scripture. As Scripture said, and Scripture cannot be broken, it is only referring to the Old Testament. And the Old Testament only acknowledges one Savior. Read it in the 43rd and 45th chapters of Isaiah. I am the Lord, your God your Savior, and besides me there is no Savior. The Lord is the only Savior. He said, I, even I, am He. I am the Lord your God, your Savior, and besides me there is no Savior. Therefore, if a Savior is born, it should be the definite article, the Savior is born, for there are not many saviors, only one savior. The Lord, our God, that Lord is one. And if he is the savior, and he is born this day in the city of David, and David is born, David took the stronghold of Zion and renamed it the city of David. But he went up into Zion to the water shaft. He went up in a way that no one could ever suspect, as we are told in the book of Samuel. He built from the outside in and up at the same time. The only way you could do that is by building a spiral. So he built a spiral, and that's a true motion that you make from generation into regeneration. You go up like a serpent, right up into Zion. This is Zion. Zion is not on the north shoulder of Africa. Zion is right here in your own wonderful skull. That's the city of David. That is the stronghold that he took. And in that area, a child is born. A child only symbolizing the birth of the Savior. And the Savior is the Lord God Jehovah. Now I read the story of the Lord God Jehovah. And then suddenly, in me, that story begins to unfold. I cannot come to any other conclusion than that the fact I am he. So then I need not be told thereafter that unless I believe I am he, I will continue in my sin, for I know I am he. So if this is true of him, and only of him, and then it became true of me, well, then I must be the very one spoken of in Scripture as the Lord God Jehovah. Even though I am now a simple little man, that every day it gets older and older, the body gets weaker and weaker, and eventually it will burn up, they'll take it from me, or I will simply depart from it, and they'll discard it. But in spite of that, that in me, that has the experience, that being in me, call it by any name, call it by any name, it is the Lord God Jehovah. That is a story true of every being in the world, and everyone is going to experience it. Not some little being born of a woman who let not know a man that has nothing to do with the story. Now they begin to question that in the Catholic Church. I saw here recently that this American priest begins to question seriously the story of the virgin birth. It's something entirely different. You were born of mortal parents. You are destined to be reborn of immortal parents. 